Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel and you join me today with a bit of an old timer. And when I mean a bit of an old timer, well, this car is, although this is a brand new car, of course it is, because you're probably going, AJ, have you lost the plot completely? No, I haven't. This is the sixth generation VW Polo, if you haven't already realized. When I mean a bit of an old timer, 46 years in production. That's a bit of a record, if you ask me. That's simply amazing. And over 20 million of these cars have been sold. In actual fact, this car is so old, AJ actually remembers it when he was at school. I was a teenager. I remember my biology teacher turning up and me just staring at it, going, wow. And then she got out of the car. There you go. That's just the way it rolls. Let's get around this car. Let's get under the bonnet. Let's get in the back, see what it's like for the passengers. Check out the engine configurations. Take it out on the road and give you our evaluation of the new VW Polo. So the entry level car comes with 15 inch alloys like these ones. There's a choice of eight different styles and you can get 16 or even 17 inch alloys as well as you move up through the trim levels. So a good choice, there you go. And if you want to just buy yourself a set of 17s, you can do. Just pay the extra money for them. Um, again, you can upgrade on your lighting system. This one comes with the standard headlights. However, there is a full LED set as well that you can get. You get an LED running light on all the models as well. And you also get the fog lights down here on this particular one, they're the halogens. However, they do change as you come up to a junction. If you're turning left or turning right, they will let other motorists know which way you're going as well as your turn indicator, which is fantastic. And they obviously act as fog lights as well. Round at the front, I love these new lines. It's really Really slick it's really sleek and I love the way the bonnet is it's just all showing off its its style its individuality as a VW Polo let's check out under the bonnet now the actual bonnet release catch in the UK is down here in the driver's side footwell obviously if you're abroad it's going to be left-hand drive it be in the passenger footwell because they're not going to move it around that's pretty obvious um, bonnet release catch is directly here above the VW logo just slide it across with one finger no gas struts but you weren't expecting that. It's a little bit heavy, but once you get it up, it's very easy just to prop it up with that little strut there. So there are three different types of engine, but there's only one engine. I'll, I'll explain. One litre, three cylinder engine, three different horsepowers. You've got 80, 95 and 110. Simple, so the same engine. And that's what it looks like. It's very neat and very compact. And I can say, having driven it for over a week now, it's very, very quiet. Anyway, we'll talk about that when we get it out on the road. You can get a five-speed manual gearbox, which is what this car has. There is also a six-speed manual and there's a seven-speed auto, but the seven-speed auto is only available in the higher brake horsepowers, just to let you know on that. There are five different trim levels and believe it or not, there are eight different packs that you can attach to this car. I'll explain all those when we get it out on the road. In the meantime, let's get around the back and take a look. Round at the back, it's a good looking car. I really like the lines on this car and I like, love these new LED clusters that they've put in. Really nice. Um, you've got your VW badge in the middle, Polo obviously there. No fakery, no fake exhaust. We like that too. Don't like fake exhaust. Cars available in a number of new colours as well. There is a purple. I'd love to have got the purple and shown you. It's really mad, but this new blue is really, really nice. About 10 different colour schemes you can choose from. DAB radio air up the top, got a bit of aero going on here and a brake light in there. That aero helps to keep this rear screen clear and it also helps with the drag coefficiency as they say. You also get a little wash wipe here for those times when the rain is just really, really heavy and you do need to, well, the good thing about this screen is, one, you can keep it clean with that, but two, look at the width of it and look at the, you know, the actual size of the screen. It makes reversing and parking and getting in and out of tight situations really, really easy. Trust me, I've driven this car a lot. Another thing I like about this is one it's tinted like the other rear screens as well but also it sits in its own rubber it's one of those sort of floaty screens as I call them so you don't get that sort of rubber that sits around it you get a lovely pin sharp line all the way around and that water doesn't sit inside the rubber and rot away here in the in the metal really good thinking that is okay simple stuff you know the situation with a VW you push the button like that and it releases the back so we'll just lift it up like that Gas assisted, there you go, we've got some nice struts on here. Didn't take long to pop up there. We'll talk about that in a minute. You know how I hate these things. But first up, let's show you something in here. Well, first up, there's only 300 litres. It's not that big in its class, the super mini or compact, whatever you want to call it. It's just not that big. But it is big underneath here because you can pop that up. It's got a couple of little stays there, so it pops into position. I don't even have to hold it. 
there is space for a full size spare wheel. Can you believe that? And if you want the space saver, you can put that in there as well. But I'd go for the full size spare wheel because they're both exactly the same cost. They're 100 UK pounds extra. It's a no brainer if you ask me. Why would you bother with these things? Why? Latex, rubber stuff that you pump into your tire, ruin the tire, and then try and pump it up using the pump that it comes with and then it doesn't work and you sat there scratching your head going well I don't understand it I clamped the uh, the wheel I, I bent the alloy but surely the the latex will repair it no it won't it doesn't even repair a standard puncher trust me I've had it I've had the experience of it I'm not gonna argue, I'm not even gonna go down the argument route on that I ended up sat there for three hours waiting for the recovery services. Doesn't work, get rid of them. Get yourself a space saver or get yourself a full size new tire. 100 pounds, get one, there you go. And throw these away, because I think they're the most uneconomical, horrible things to get. Enough ranting and raving. Let me put this one down, it just pops down like that. Got a dual level rear floor in this as well. Now, you know I hate these, and you know what normally happens when I take these out. I pop them out like that. It pops out quite easily. Look, it's all bendy and horrible. Why do we need these? I hate them. So normally at this point, I'm going to go wee and throw it away there. But I always say they can have a saving grace. And the saving grace is you are out on the road. Suddenly you need that extra space. You don't want to be putting this on your passenger's lap so they have to sit there all the way home like that because there's nowhere to put it. So it's got to be able to go in the car to make it practical. Pop it up there again. Watch this. This is simplicity. No matter who you are, you can do that. It's so simple, even with your spare wheel. Then you can pop that down. Ta-da! That's what I like to see. So there was no need to throw that parcel shelf away. Keep your parcel shelves if that's what you like. Okay, 60-40 split on the rear. I love this bit. Little latch over here on the right. You can just unhook it, push the seat down. Again, over here as well. Little latch, push the seat down. Nice big space, loads of space in here. That's what I like about this car. It's very practical. It's a practical car. That's why it's been around for so long. In the back there, well, I, you'd be able to get a bicycle in there easily. On this particular model, on the trim level, sorry, we'll get our words right there. This is the active. Now it doesn't come with, you know, shopping bag holders and 12 volt adapters in the back here. Check out the different trim levels. I'm sure one of those, you can add those bits in, or you can add one of those eight different packs that you can add to this car. And one of them's gonna have those bits if you want them. To be honest, I think this car's absolutely fine the way it is. However, we need to find out if it's comfortable for the passengers. So let's jump in the back and do just that. Okay, before I jump in the back, just to show you how far back these doors go. It's almost like, you know, 45 degrees, which makes getting in and out really, really simple. You just pop yourself in and out like that. Um, one thing I don't, I'm really not happy with, if you look here, that's as far as the window will come down, which I understand if you've got a couple of kids in the back here and you're thinking of safety and stuff like that, that does matter. But you should have an option to, to allow you to drop that right down, especially if you're an adult, you know. So I'm gonna push that back out anyway. It's good headroom in here, really, really nice. Very basic, but very comfortable and loads of leg room and knee. it's just really nice sat in the back here. Um, in the center here, we've got quite a high transmission tunnel. You have to uh, sling your leg over like that. I can probably get, yeah, it's, it's a good boozy lunch one. And when I mean a boozy lunch one, it's like you've driven down the pub, you've got your manager with you, you've met Gladys and Cheryl from admin and uh, the three of you have had one too many glasses and the three of you can sit in the back while your manager drives you back. There you go, simple as, isn't it? Um, looking in the middle here, well, you do get the recessed seat belts, which is good. You've got your isofix points and they are sort of hidden away there. So there's no plasticky bits that are gonna break off. There's no central column here to pop down, no armrest. Um, one good thing is these seat belts, I do like the way they sit right back here. So when you pull the seats down, they don't get all caught up. You've got your little headrest bits up here. You get free bits of sellotape with this car as well. How nice of them to supply that and use it for a bit of sticky tape later. Put that in the front there. Um, yeah, so all in all, it's really nice. There's no ski hatch, there's nothing like that. It's just a nice basic car. The material itself, I have noticed, does seem to pick up, you know, lots and lots of bits and pieces. Um, and you've got your inevitable sort of pouch here for, well, back in the old days, it used to be for maps. And I suppose when this car in its infancy, you'd have had maps in here. In actual fact, my parents used to put colouring books and things like that in the back. So there you go. Anyway, 
I'm quite comfortable sat in here and I could definitely do a few miles and my seat is in the driving position. So there you go. Let's get around the front, see what it's like for the driver because ultimately it's normally that person who's paying for this car. Right, so here we are up front and as I suspected, it is superbly comfortable. I wasn't thinking anything less of this car. They've sold so many now, they must have got it just spot on with the seats. The actual driving position is really good and I love the steering wheel. The other thing is there's plenty of manoeuvrability with this steering wheel as well. You can push it right in and down and up. That's really great. You can get it in a position where you really need it. All of this on this particular trim level are manual seating. So you have to adjust it all yourself. And it's very simple. There's levers down here. You can just push it down, pull it up, and then move it backwards and forwards at the front. You know what I'm talking about, guys. Over there by the driver's door handle is your lock and unlock. So if you're pulling up and you've got this set on the auto lock when you're driving and you want to let someone in, that's where your open and, un and close button is as well, just to remind you. Starting to the right of this, um, you've got your lighting cluster down here. I just set it on the auto and let it do its thing. It's really good, really love that. Um, this car isn't keyless entry and it's not keyless ignition either. So we have to pop the key open like that. We have to pop it in like that, which is really easy, like the good old days, and then turn it on, as simple as that. Um, so let's start, as I said, from the right-hand side, moving over. We've got this lovely digital instrument panel. I mean, VW have really sort of crafted this now. They've got it to a fine art where they, you can set this up how you like it. And even on a, a basic model like this particular car we're in at the moment, you've still got that option to, to maneuver things about. You've got a little computer in the middle there and you can up and down on the, on the wheel there. You've also got an Ask VW button up there. It's like a little face and you can pre-program that to do different things that you want it to do which is great. At the bottom here, you've got a media scroll button here. So if you're listening to the radio, you can scroll across, it will come up on here. So everything is focused on you driving, which is really important. And then you've got an up and a down so you can scroll through the menu there as well. It's so simple to use. That's, that's one thing I do love about Volkswagen cars. They keep everything simple. On the left-hand side here, you've got your cruise control and you've got your speed limiter. That's all this car comes with on this particular trim level with these packs. You can increase that to lane keep, distance, and all sorts of bits and pieces that you want to add to it. At the bottom there, you've got a volume control as well. So you can just reset the volume to whatever you want while you're driving along. The set button, how you set that, it's just, it just says set. So as you're driving along, you get to a speed you want to sit at, press set, and then you can just sit there at that speed. And by touching the brake, as you know, or pressing cancel on here, you can cut that off as well. Okay, so we've got a nice, decent sized touchscreen over here, TFT touchscreen. Um, at the top here, you've got your DAB radio, then you've got your media. In this car, you've got Bluetooth, we've got Android mirroring, we've got Apple Play, it's, it's all there. You'd expect that from a very modern car. Um, you've got your phone settings here, you can Bluetooth your phone, which is really nice. You've got your voice settings there. Then you've got your nav system. Even on the entry level car, you get a decent nav on this car as well. And of course you do get the uh, air conditioning as well with it. You've got your app section. So you can download your apps from your VW, uh, which is really good as well. So you can have all different apps and bits and pieces on it. You've got your car status, vehicle status, scroll across on that, tells you your tire pressure and monitoring and all that. Um, and then down the bottom, you go to your me the actual menu itself, and that is where all the widgets are. Love that word, the widgets. So that's everything I've just said and more is all in there and you can scroll across. It's really quick as well. The processor on this is excellent, absolutely superb. The only thing I don't like about this, one, you get all those horrible fingerprints on this. As a matter of fact, you've got to come up with some way you know, like a, a screen that we can touch without getting those horrible greasy prints on there. Because I've had to clean this three or four times. And also on this particular car, you've got like half or a quarter of the screen there has been taken up with a, a hazard warning light, which I think really spoils the whole look. That's unfortunate. They could have put it down here somewhere. Why do we need it right up there? Anyway, um, we'll move across. We're going now to the, um, the glove box. And here in the glove box, as usual, we end up with a copy of War and Peace. Um, this is nearly 300 pages of waffle, of stuff you are never going to read, never going to look at, a complete waste of space. You imagine producing these, they must cost a lot of money. And if 20 million of these have been made, imagine the saving, not only to the planet with the trees and the paper, the saving you would have made if you didn't put all this in there. You, space saving for starters. You'd have had double the size of the glove box. Now you're going to halve it because I'm putting that in there. It's stupid. You can look up anything you want to know on your, cat, on your phone. You can do it on your PC. If you're out and you want to change a fuse, there'll be a hundred YouTubers showing you how to change a fuse on this car. It's ridiculous. 
I mean, trust me, I know, I'm a YouTuber. So why do we need those books? And that would save us money with that parcel shelf, get rid of both of them, and then they could give us, the manufacturer could give us a spare wheel. Simple, enough said. Right, let's move down here. On this particular trim level, you get heated front seats. Very nice there, one either side. You do get some knobs on here. There's four knobs in this car. I love a knob. As you know, these are decent black knobs. They're not the biggest knobs I've ever come across, but they are decent and they're black. So, you know, we'll forgive them for that. At the end of the day, guys, joking apart, when you get in this car, it's the middle of the winter, it's freezing cold, you've got your gloves on. I don't want to be flapping around trying to find my, you know, bits and pieces. I want my volume turned down and I want to put my radio on while I'm waiting for the car to warm up or I want to change the temperature. I don't want to be trying to push buttons, you know, it's all silly. What I want to do is grab hold of a decent knob, turn it up or turn it down. And you, trust me, when you get a decent knob between your fingers, it really makes a difference, 100%. So, thank thank fully for that we've got plenty of knobs All right up the front here you have a couple of USB C's with an adapter and we do need the adapter at the moment unfortunately buy yourself a few of these because these are going to go missing guaranteed so you've got two two little USB C's in there I would imagine on a higher trim level something like the R line or one of those you're going to get a wireless um, charger in there for your Apple uh, Apple device um, five speed manual gearbox in this car this is the active we mentioned that earlier you've got a parking there's no camera on this but you do have a parking sensors all around it, it comes up there nicely as you can see now um, you just can turn that on and off whenever you want it also the auto stall button as well hate those hate this car when it stops when you get to the traffic lights car stops and then it, it takes that and it starts again um, I am eco-friendly, trust me. I do believe in saving the planet, but for that, no, just turn it off. I'd rather have it running all the time. Handbrake, you can do handbrake turns in this car. It's a real handbrake. It's not an electronic handbrake. Love a handbrake. Look at that, ready? Oh, it actually, it, it, oh, do it twice. I had to do it twice. Even the cameraman went with the car there. It started to roll down the hill. <laughs> um, 12 volt adapter, not a cigarette lighter. However, guess what? VW do a smoker's pack. A smoker's pack where you can have a cigarette lighter. <gasps> I said the dreaded C word, a cigarette lighter. Yes, you can actually have a cigarette lighter in here. As I presume the Germans like the occasional cigarette, you know. Um, you don't really get um, a coffee sort of cup holder thing here. It's energy drinks by the looks of it. It's, it's really small. I tried getting a cup in here earlier. It was like, no, nah, that, that's not going to happen. Uh, a couple of cubby bits in here where you can put the keys and bits and pieces, stop them rolling around. But that's about it. And to be honest, I'm sat here, it's extremely comfortable. And the main thing is, it's, you know, it's one of those cars, it's gonna have a lot of practicality, but what's it like for the driver to get it out on the road, especially with the manual gearbox? That's the, my cue to get it out and say, let's go do it. Once you get the VW Polo out on the road, it's through and through a Volkswagen. You can feel it. It's got a good surety about it. It's got nice brakes. They're there if you want them. You don't have to pump for them. You don't have to push for them. Um, you've got that um, really just nice, quiet feeling that a Volkswagen just generally gives you. Nice, good field of view, vision at the front. Great out the back uh, with that large rear screen as well. Um, no blind spot mirrors on this car. I do think they're fairly essential nowadays, but that comes with a different trim level. Don't forget, we are driving the Active, which isn't the top of the range. Um, so it doesn't come with all the necessary bits and pieces. Speaking of necessary bits and pieces, okay, let's start talking, you know, what packs you can buy for this and all the extras and bits that you can buy. Well, as I said earlier, there are eight different packs well they're not all packs they're add-ons so they you know and there's actually more than that you can add so many bits and pieces from spare wheels to roof racks to bike carriers and all things like that but the main things like the driver assistance pack the winter pack things like that the media pack i think these are all definitely things that you should consider and you don't have to necessarily go high up in your trim level you could buy say an active um, and then add in a couple of packs to that, which would then bring you up to another trim league. You have to weigh that up with your salesman. Um, entry level car is the match, and that comes in at 17,550 UK pounds. I think that's not bad. Um, what I don't think is good is the warranty that you get with the Volkswagens. Volkswagens get a three year or 60,000 mile warranty. That really isn't good. I think it could be a lot better. When, it, when you start looking at some of the Japanese alternatives, some of the, you know, the Korean alternatives, let's say, um, you need to up your game there, Volkswagen. I think it could be 75,000 or unlimited on a three year deal. You can extend that. You can extend it to four years for around about 150 UK pounds extra. 
have a chat with your salesman once again and he'll explain that or she will explain that to you. Um, war uh, we've done the warranty, we're talking servicing, minor servicing, which is what VW aptly call it, the minor service. Um, it costs around about 185 UK pounds. It's not bad. And if you want a major service, that's going to cost you £354. That's if you go to the Volkswagen dealer, of course. And if you want your warranty kept intact, then you will have to go to your Volkswagen dealer to do that. So bear that in mind when you're looking around for a service on this car. Uh, safety aids on the car. We did mention the packs. Um, safety aids that come with this particular car. There is a speed limiter. You've got autonomous uh, braking front and rear. NCAP 5 rating on all these cars. Don't forget that. I mean, it's a super, super safe car. Um, you also get the reverse uh, beepers on this car and the front beepers, so it gives you an all-round sense of when you're parking, really good. Um, Insurance-wise, very good. If you're going to insure one of these cars, you would actually think of insuring this perhaps for a teenager who's starting to learn to drive because it's quite a reasonable figure to go for on this. I actually looked it up because I have a son who was very interested having had you know all five of uh, the kids, well, including me, four of the kids in the car. Um, it, it came about that they really liked this car and you know they were in intrigued as to how much it would cost to insure because they thought it was a lot bigger engine and it was more powerful than what it was but there you go it's quite misleading this car not in technical spec but in the way it sounds and feels it feels much faster and bigger um, so I've waffled quite a lot. I've said it's good on insurance. It's, what I haven't discussed is the economy. Um, around town, you can wait for this because it's quite a shocker. Um, we're up in the 38s to 40s around town, guys. I mean, that is seriously good. For that little one litre three cylinder engine is performing to perfection. Um, out on the road, five of us in this car on the highway, cruise control set 70 miles an hour, 58 to the gallon. Now, and I, I absolutely assure you, 56 to 58, we were ticking along all the way. Depends if we start to go up a hill on that highway, it did drop back to 56, but just on the flat, 58 to the gallon. Incredible. Um, bit, uh, the, the, the actual figures that come up, the actual statistics on this was 49 to 54 on a run combined. 58, there you go, it can happen. Um, the only thing I have noticed on this car, you put fuel in it, and when you fill it up, it seems to go down really quickly. And I was quite, I thought, well, how comes I'm getting so much to the gallon, but my fuel's disappearing at a rate of knots. And then I realized it's only a 40 litre fuel tank on this. So, you know, you, you can fill it up very easily, but you have to do it quite often. So if you're going on a long journey, you're gonna be stopping a few times more than you would be on a normal. Um, so yeah, there's nothing to really worry about. Um, love all the, uh, the bits and pieces on the screen here. We've gone all through that, but it's just nice and easy to use. Likewise, setting up your, you know, just press the, the on button for the cruise control and press the set. So simple. It's a lovely car to drive. It's definitely a car that I probably wouldn't have considered prior to actually test driving it. So I do think it's very worthwhile you going out and test driving one of these. If you want to go silly, get yourself the GTI. There is a GTI and there's a GTI Plus as well. You're gonna, it's got a two liter engine, it's got over 200 brake horsepower, but it's, you know, we're talking golf territory now at 27,000 UK pounds. Nah, settle down with a 17 grand entry level one of these, add a couple of packs to it, you got yourself a great car. So there you have it guys, another video from AJ the player and I hope you really enjoyed that one. I did, I enjoyed making it as well. But before you go, I'm gonna give you something for free. Yes, something for free. It's called the Player Bookazine. Now, if you're not aware, the Player is a much bigger organization than just a YouTube channel. We are part of a big magazine. It's a bookazine for guys. It's got cars, it's got boats, it's got planes, golf, helicopters, interviews everything us guys love. And ladies, if you are watching, please feel free to have a look because there's nothing untoward in our pages. It's all there for everybody to enjoy, but it's mainly geared towards a male lifestyle. There you go. Now, you can have the online version of this completely free of charge. You can't have the big book. Um, that costs £100 each. I'd love to give you one for nothing, but I don't think my boss would be too happy about that. But you can have the online one. And we're not even going to data capture off you because all you've got to do is put your name in and your email. And then you can download it or you can actually flick the pages online because the clever bods at the player have made it so you can do it with your finger or a mouse. 
very clever. I love using it, it's great, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, so now you need to know how to get that, two ways. One is, hang on, pull that in there, there you go, www.theplayer.co.uk. Go straight to the subscribe section, just stick your name and your email in there, like I said. Hang on, I'll leave it up there for a minute, so you can remember, I'll do better than that, ready? There you go, up there. There's a link straight through to the website. Go there as well if you want. When you get there, just fill in those details that I told you about. Simple as, and it's all yours, and you don't owe us anything. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to the actual AJ the Player YouTube channel. Because if you subscribe, then you're gonna get, you know, regular updates, if you leave the bell sign unchecked, of course, do that. And then we're putting up different videos every week. You know, could be anything. Even I don't know half the time. That's good fun about doing this job. One thing that I would like to ask you is don't forget the thumbs up, guys, because I don't get pay rises, I don't get bonuses, you know, it's no more money in it, but it is. Pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors. It means we're doing a good job. If you don't think we're doing a good job, don't give us a thumbs up. But if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week with something else.